The system of marriage relations in ancient Rome was from a modern point of view so complex that even serious researchers themselves give confusing testimony. To begin at least with the fact that the Romans had several forms of marriage. According to the classical one, the groom bought the bride from her family by striking a coin on the scales, and she became his property. The second option was that the man and woman simply lived together, declaring that they were a family. This is where Roman women came up with a way not to become the property of their husband. A woman became the property after a year of living together, so three days before the term. She moved for a while, for example, to her parents, and then returned. The harshest rules were in a marriage contracted with an elaborate religious ceremony. It could not be dissolved. With the flourishing of the empire, free relationships became widespread. This was also a marriage, but the wife had separate property, and to declare themselves a family or divorce, it was enough to say so. Marriage contracts could be drawn up, but this was not always done. And these are just the main options. The complexity of marriage relations fully reflected the heterogeneous composition of Roman society. Plebeians, horsemen, patricians, freedmen, citizens and non-citizens, rich and poor, provincials and metropolitan, they could combine different positions. Marriages between different categories were not particularly prohibited, just some were not recognized by the laws. Children were considered illegitimate, inheritance could not be passed on and there was no recourse to the courts. Families were created mostly by convenience. They could be happy or not, but it was not a problem. Divorce was generally not a complicated procedure. Family was a very important issue for Roman rulers. With the expansion of conquests, more and more soldiers were needed. Rome and Italy were already short of human resources. Therefore, and lured provincials into the army with the promise of citizenship. Barbarization of the armed forces later became one of the factors in the fall of the empire. Harsh laws were passed to strengthen family values, especially tough by Emperor Augustus. Men under 25 years old and women under 20 years old were obliged to marry. Violation of the decree was punishable by a very heavy fine. There was also a considerable tax for childlessness, and childless widows up to the age of 40 were fined, encouraging them to remarry. Because of this, sham marriages became a common phenomenon. In Rome, it was always emphasized that the main purpose of the family was children. A family with three or four children enjoyed significant benefits, such as tax exemption. If poor families claimed that they could not support a child, they were given a substantial state allowance. First of all, for boys, the demographic problem was acute. It is worth noting the sad fact that half or even most of the children born died in infancy. Apparently, the Romans had no pediatrics and separate care of women's health, as many women died in childbirth. 